I've been here at college for about three weeks now and as I'm starting to get through my art classes, my studio classes, there's a couple things that I've been thinking about that I feel like are really important and I just had never thought about before. So if you're an artist and you're looking for ways to become more creative, to change up your craft, just get better overall, I'm gonna tell you the key to becoming a better artist, even though it may not be something you wanna hear. Now that I'm here, I am officially majoring in studio art and I'm starting to learn a lot that I previously had no idea about. We just recently started contour drawings in my drawing class. I'm learning new ways of writing in my writing class than from what I learned in high school, even as somebody who did do a lot of coursework that involved writing. And overall, there's just a lot of new things that I've been learning because I open myself up to the idea of learning. So my biggest piece of advice for becoming a better artist, a better creator, a better general human being is kill your ego. Now, is this a weird piece of advice? A little bit, but I'll explain a little of what I mean. Going through the process of killing your ego has three main benefits to me. First, you open yourself up to further learning opportunities. Second, you open yourself up to becoming a different person. And third, you're able to create without judgment, which is really important as an artist. If you're skeptical now, don't worry. I was too. If you haven't seen my channel before, Yes, I'm Courtney, and I was a high-achieving senior in high school who ended up going on a scholarship to a high-achieving private school. So as you can imagine, in my senior year of high school, I kind of thought that I was the shit. Plain and simple. I felt like I had my life figured out. I felt like I knew most of what I wanted to do with my life. And the beautiful thing about the process from senior year of high school to freshman year of college is you are quite literally starting all over. I guess just a little backstory and some things that have changed in my life. I had an art business and a vintage clothing business in high school and I basically kind of obliterated both of those moving into college because I knew that it was going to be a lot of stress to put on myself in my first year. I moved three hours away from home, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that is a lot for me. And in general, I'm just going through this very weird new sort of rebirth phase of my life. I'm having to make new friends, meet new people, gain new interests, etc. And as far as I see it, this is the best time for sort of like an ego death because I am starting fresh. So let's define what an ego is because my definition in this instance may be different from other people's. When I'm defining an ego, I think that I'm sort of looking at it as having a very strong sense of who you are and your place in the world, but not always in a positive way. For example, in high school, that was kind of born out of me being high achieving. So in some situations, I thought that I was better than other people. And I'm willing to admit these things now because even though I know that there were situations in which I was wronged, there's also situations in which I have wronged other people. And when you're on the process to becoming a more mature person, these are just sorts of things that you realize. So the online definition of ego is a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. Then in psychoanalysis, the part of the mind that mediates between the conscious and unconscious and is responsible for reality testing and a sense of personal identity. So that's kind of close to what I was thinking. Now that we've kind of defined what an ego is and not that it's necessarily a bad thing, but when you get very stuck to a certain sense of personal identity, you don't want to let go of it. And as an artist, that can really stifle your growth. It can make you lose out on opportunities. Now that I'm a freshman in college taking studio art classes, I have realized that even though I am like traditionally considered to be a good artist or at least good technically, there are a lot of things that I didn't learn like proper anatomy. I had never done contour drawings, things like that, that I'm now learning. And if I had sat on my high horse this whole time and just said, nope, nope, I'm not gonna learn this. I'm too good already. I'm just a good artist. Like I could pull out my list of accomplishments. I could sit here and say, oh, well, I've already done this. I've already been in this exhibition. But art is so subjective that if you sit here and tell yourself you're already good, you're never gonna get any better. 
So in this case, kind of killing and taking away that ego made me more apt to learn, which was my first section. When you don't really have a strong expectation of who you are and what your abilities are, for example, like before I was in my mind like, oh, I'm a really good painter, I'm really good at drawing. And now I'm like, okay, girl, you don't even know what a contour drawing is. You don't know what any anatomy is. Like, you just gotta open yourself up to learning more because in reality, we will never get to a point where we know everything there is to know about a subject and that's just the truth. You can inch closer to it, but to let go of just like the need to know everything, things will be a lot easier for you. Now, the next one that I mentioned was it keeps you locked into a certain sense of personal identity, which I've already touched on a little bit, but the problems with that is you don't give yourself any room to explore new versions of yourself, explore new interests, things like that, because you're already very locked into this sense of self, which you're saying like, this is me, this is not changing. A lot of the reason why I'm thinking about this now is because I am moving to college. It is a very transitional period of my life. For example, I'm probably never going to live in my childhood home again, like full time. I'm probably going to have a job or some sort of fellowship when I get out of college, maybe even a residency. And now I'm living sort of on my own for the first time and three hours away from my home. You know, there's all these things which you sort of have to grapple with. And it's hard to hold on to an old sense of identity. And at the same time, I don't know why I would want to other than for a sense of comfort because yes, it is comforting to walk into my childhood bedroom. Yes, it is comforting to see those familiar sights, but it's also so exciting to be given new opportunities, to find new things to do in the world. So while there's no shame in longing for the past or reminiscing, you have to remember to look towards the future and you're here in the present building up, creating this life that you want to live in someday. And that should be just like the ultimate goal to work for a fulfilling life that you can live and say, hey, that's me, I did that. And of course, one of the big ways you do this is by sort of forming that new identity or at least adding to who you are, you know, it's sort of like a stepping stone. You're not literally starting from scratch most of the time, you're sort of adding on to the person you were before. So even though I'm sort of being retaught art now and formally learning in like an education setting, I was self-taught prior to this. I can't erase that history and that's something that's influencing the way in which I'm learning in this now education environment, but that also doesn't mean that I can't learn totally new things over here and change up my art style and all of these cool things. So don't just start from scratch. Don't be a fake person. Don't try to be someone that you're not, but do recognize that we change as people and it's okay to look back on your past self and think that that doesn't fully represent who you are anymore. We as a society are really scared of change. A lot of people are scared to change over time, the way that they look, their political beliefs, the way that they act. And a lot of people will say that you're fake or you're a bad person if these things do change, but the way that you interact with the world after sort of shifting into that different identity, I feel that determines who you are as a person. But enough of the ethical and moral dilemmas, you know, I'm out of my philosophy class because we're here for art. And I know artsy people can tend to get a little wordy like me. The third biggest thing about letting go of that ego and just allowing yourself to be open to new experiences, new things, realizing that you don't know everything, you're not going to be this specific idea of a person forever. You will have the ability to create so much more freely. Recently, once I kind of stopped like subscribing to the idea that my art has to be realistic, I have to oil paint because that's what I've always done. I have to continue on this path of getting better at realism because that's what I've done my whole life and it would be a waste if I haven't. I removed those barriers. I removed those expectations that I had put on myself, you know, Maybe some other people like an art teacher here and there or your parents or someone has put expectations on you. But a lot of the times, even when it started from another person, we eventually start internalizing those within ourselves. You're doing yourself a favor by removing those chains and sort of breaking into your own world. And you never know what you will discover after that barrier is gone. 
For example, I've been creating a lot of really creative, expressive work, and a lot of my personal work tends to be colorful. A lot of the work that I'm doing in my drawing class is a little bit bleak, more so focusing on the technical anatomical aspects because that's what we're learning right now. But if I had kept on this path of believing that I was already a good artist and I was already working towards my realism, I would have never probably even have come to college because I would have said, okay, I'm already self-taught. I don't need all that. And now that I'm here, I'm realizing how much I do. You need to learn to enjoy the process of creating, to just have fun again. You know, when you were little, you didn't necessarily create for the outcome, like cool. It was awesome if mom or dad like ended up putting it on the fridge, but you weren't making it for that necessarily. You were making because it was fun. We were little, all we really did was chase what was fun and put to the side what was boring. And now, yes, there are a lot of boring things in our life that we have to do, like could be your job, your taxes, even your schooling, even though I personally find my schooling to be very interesting. You still need to incorporate a little bit of that fun in your life. It doesn't always have to be about the final outcome. If you are someone who struggles with the final outcome, I would recommend maybe getting a sketchbook because at the end of the day, no matter what you created on that page, you're closing it and not looking at it again. And if you're someone who in general is struggling with the whole idea of the ego death or kind of like being open to shifting your sense of self, especially as a creative person when you know so many of these aspects of you filter into your art, do recognize that this is just my advice. This is just what I am going through. And I find that when you're already in a period of great upheaval, of great change, moving from one period of your life to the next, this sort of thing will kind of happen whether you like it or not. And I'm here making the most of it. So in the future, as you're creating, try to let go of these preconceived notions that you have. One thing my art teacher was telling us is when we're making our contour drawings, don't look at this as a hand, look at it as just like a peculiar oddity. And you're like tracing all of these things and like just making something new in general. Stop looking at the world and yourself as something that's already been here and something that needs to stay this way. You can shift your path a little bit and sort of switch things up. And even if you're not going through a great period of change, like the switch from a high school to college and living on your own, you can still find ways to incorporate new routines into your life and overall just really improve your creative practice. I hope that this video helped you and maybe that you will consider how you can challenge the existing notions in your life in order to become a more creative, a more spontaneous person. Have a great day great life and keep on creating. Bye!